Backwards compatibility has become one of the more talked about features of the next generation of game consoles. Now, despite the fact that this is not the first generation of consoles to heavily advertise this feature, it seems to be more important now than ever that prospective buyers be able to carry over their old game purchases to their new machine. Despite the fact that both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S or X have both been advertised as featuring backwards compatibility with the previous generation, Sony has been a little bit more cagey about what its capabilities are, oftentimes saying that it won't feature 100% perfectly on every game. In fact, saying more recently that only 99% of games are expected to work, whereas Microsoft has just said, it works. Now, what is the reason for this confusion? Now, I feel like Sony has been pretty upfront about why this machine won't work perfectly with every old game, but there seems to be a lot of confusion, especially with game journalists, about what that means and what the kind of problems would be causing this. I do feel that even though Microsoft hasn't stated as much, they will fall victim to the same problems. So just what the hell am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about the new machines having difficulty executing the instructions of the old machines in the exact way that the old machines did themselves. Such inconsistencies in the performance between generations could result in some unusual compatibility issues, or bugs and errors creeping into the programs as they're running. Let's look at an example here. Now, don't be too worried about if you don't understand what you're looking at. It It doesn't really matter because it's not an actual program. It's just kind of a theoretical example. In the top half of the program, we are performing one action. Down at the bottom, we are performing a completely independent second action. The way this code is set up, it performs one and then performs the other. Well, we don't really need to do that, though, because the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One both have eight core processors. That means you can form eight separate actions simultaneously. So a more efficient way of doing this is to use this. What you're looking at now has multi-threaded the program, meaning it has split the two different actions into different threads which can then be computed on two different processor cores. This is a massive boost in efficiency because we're utilizing more of the PlayStation or Xbox's hardware to compute the program faster. So everybody seems like they end up winning here. We get a faster program, we utilize more of the hardware for a more efficient operation, and we're all good. But there is actually a bug in this software, a bug which, oddly enough, will never present itself when running on the older PlayStation 4 or Xbox One hardware. The problem exists down here. Basically what it's doing is utilizing the same location in the system's memory with the two different threads. But when we get down to the bottom of thread number one, it deletes that memory location in order to save memory for future use. Problem is, the second thread might still be utilizing that piece of memory, and in the event that that happens, the game will simply crash, stop functioning, it'll break on you. Game breaking bug. But I've got good news for you. This bug is never actually going to go and present itself, at least if you're running your game on a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. The reason why is because the bug will only present itself in the event that thread number one manages to complete its task prior to thread number two. Now, because of the configuration of the hardware on the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, that will never occur. Unfortunately for the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series S or X, it's a bit of a different story. Because of the difference in the performance characteristics of the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series S or X, this no longer works quite like it used to. Thread number one executes quite a bit faster than it used to in comparison to thread two, maybe even completing before thread two does a causing a crash. This kind of error, with a multi-threading program performing actions out of order, is called a race condition. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, this is the result of a bug. There really shouldn't be any bugs in the software. You need to ship complete pieces of software. 
And while you're sort of right there, you can never really expect any piece of software, especially video games, to be completely bug free. And the fact is that this problem never presented itself on the older hardware. So even if it was noticed, it might be something that nobody thought was actually all that important to fix because, hell, it's not a problem. At least it wasn't at the time. This is by no means the only type of problem when it comes to backwards compatibility. Race conditions are only a single type of problem, and this is only a single way that a race condition can exist. But there could be a number of different problems that prevent software from the PlayStation 4 running on the PlayStation 5. So Sony cannot guarantee a 100% backwards compatibility with their machine. And you know what? Microsoft can't either. Even though they haven't said anything about it, I am certain that they are running into the same types of problems. Games can be patched to fix this problem, but I doubt we're going to see a lot of those. Now that's pretty much it, and if that's all the information you really needed, you can feel free to stop watching now. But if you want to stick around a little bit, I can provide a little bit more detailed information as to why one of these threads is running faster than it should be. Now let's take a deeper dive into this program to see exactly what is going wrong here. Exactly why thread number one is running faster than it should be. Thread number one does need to run slower than thread number two, and that is never a problem on the PS4 or Xbox One because it is accessing the hard drive on the console. It reads some data from there, which is always going to be a slow operation, and then it performs a number of different calculations on it, the details of which are completely unimportant. Whereas thread number two is working entirely off of the system memory, fast operations, and will compute all of its actions really fast, and then end. So that way, on a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One, slow hard drive operations versus fast memory operations. Thread number one is going to be slower. However, a PlayStation 4 game installed on the PlayStation 5 solid state drive is going to load quite a bit faster. A slow hard disk operation is going to become an extraordinarily fast solid state drive application. So thread number one, which is required by design to be slower than thread number two, races ahead of it towards completion and deletes the piece of memory that thread number two requires. Then number two tries to access that piece of memory and causes what's called a memory exception. Well, a memory exception is a difficult thing to recover from, and since it never had to be done before, there is no kind of error correction in place, the game crashes. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this deeper dive into a technical subject than I usually do on this channel. I usually don't do this type of thing, so if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button and let me know if this was any good or not. Again, thanks for watching.